Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sip9 Hub. And for this video, we will be introducing you to statistics. Important statistical terminology and concepts will be covered. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. Let us start with a definition here. So this is a universal definition of statistics. If you try to look for books, international books and other lectures, this is commonly the definition that they used. Statistics is defined as a methodology for, for what? For the collection, tabulation or presentation, analysis, and interpretation of numerical or quantitative data. From this definition, we see that statistics is about a lot of things. It talks about the different data collection methods and introduces us some techniques in converting your data into tables and charts that are easily understood by your readers. Deeper analysis such as the computation of central tendencies, dispersion, correlation, and other inferential tests are as well covered. Most important of all, it includes the correct interpretation of the values computed from these tests. We will try to talk about these techniques in this course. Before we present the different terminology and concepts, let's have first a brief history of how statistics develop. The development of statistics as a science is associated mainly to two activities of man, politics and entertainment. Before, political states were more concerned at data collected from populations, from their territories, state administration, trade and finance, or tax collection. The need to make sense of this large amount of data motivated the development of statistics. In the 18th century, there were breakthroughs in the theory of probability as inspired by games of chance or gambling. These probability theories are the foundations of the statistics that we know today. Also, the word statistics came from the word statista, meaning statesman. The German mathematician and political scientist Gottfried Achenwall coined the term statistics. Achenwall's use of the term, however, referred strictly to the comprehensive summation of a nation's political, economic, and social aspects. Since then, the term and field of statistics have expanded substantially to include virtually all fields of inquiry attaining great significance in science, politics, economics, and actuarial science, and many other disciplines. Another important person associated with the development of statistics is Adolf Kittelet. Adolf Kittelet is considered the father of modern statistics. In the Philippine setting, the first statistical organization was established in 1940. It was then called BCS or Bureau of Census and Statistics. The organization was abolished and was changed to National Census and Statistics Office in 1974. It became NSO or National Statistics Office in 1987 and a law was passed in 1990 declaring October as the National Statistics Month. So until this day, we celebrate uh, National Statistics Month every October. Finally, in 2013, NSO 
together with other agencies was merged and was called Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA. This is the National Statistical Organization of the Philippines at present. Fields of Statistics There are two fields of statistics, descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics is a tool to describe a data set, whether a data set involves low values like the performance of students in the National Achievement Test or the data set involves high values like the high number of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines or a data set involves two different values like the perception of people about the administrative performance of the Philippine president or whether a data set involves similar values like the level of agreement of professionals in abolishing the CPD requirement when you renew your license. Inferential statistics, on the other hand, involves testing of a hypothesis about a population. We test a hypothesis about a population because we only have data from a sample. Data from a sample is not always representative of the population or is not enough to confirm our hypothesis, hence the test that we do. This means that inferential tests happens because a researcher, for example, was able to gather from a sample only but wants to talk about a population or a bigger group of subjects. To further compare descriptive statistics and inferential statistics, let us uh, give this scenario. Let us consider a group of 10 students. These are the 10 students. And after their teacher presented his lessons, their lessons, all 10 students, all of them, are supposed to take a test. For some reason, only four was able to come and took the test. So let's say those four students are the highlighted students here. It is descriptive when we simply describe the performance of the four students who were able to take the test. We are only describing the data that we have. So we mean the performance of those four students who were able to come and take the test. Since majority got a high score, three out of four takers have high scores, we may say that the performance of the four students is generally high. On the other hand, it is inferential if we want to infer about the performance of the 10 students using the scores of the four takers based from the scores of the four takers what can we say about the performance of the entire group and not only the four people here if you are doing that then you are applying inferential statistics you have a sample, you investigate the sample to come a conclusion about a bigger group. Bigger group than the sample you actually gathered data from. To further enrich our knowledge on the difference of descriptive and inferential tests, I have, have prepared, prepared a, a mini, mini test, test here. here. This, this is, is what, what we're, we're going, going to do. To do. I, will I will present, present you, you a, a sentence, sentence, a scenario. A scenario and then you identify whether that scenario is descriptive, is using descriptive statistics or inferential statistics. I'm going to read each scenario and then give you some time to think about it and then you identify. You can pause the video if you need more time. Let's start with the first one. Here is the statement. The profiles of COVID-19 cases or we mean 
those people who had COVID-19, their profiles were taken. Profiles such as sex, age, and employment. Descriptive or inferential. Thumbs up. This is descriptive. We are only describing the subjects that we have. So we want to identify the sex of those people, the age and their employment. Another one, to te test the effectivity and efficiency of a possible COVID-19 vaccine, 10,000 people were randomly selected for clinical trials. Descriptive or inferential? Time's up. The answer is yes, inferential. And that is because from this statement, someone took a smaller group, only 10,000 people, and conclude whether that vaccine is effective and efficient. The researchers did not take all people in the world just to test a vaccine. Another one, students were surveyed to identify whether they have enough technological devices and adequate internet connection for an online class. Descriptive or inferential? Time's up. And the answer is descriptive. It doesn't involve identifying a sample or a smaller group, studying it to conclude about a bigger group. So this is purely descriptive. Another one, based on a study of 500 single parent households selected by a social researcher, a magazine reports that 25% of all single-parent households are headed by a high school dropout. Five seconds. Descriptive or inferential? Mm -hmm. Time's up. This is inferential. The researcher concluded that 25% of all it's not referring only to that 500 who are involved in the study. It's concluding for all the single parent household based from the data gathered from these 500 single parent households. Inferential. We are going to differentiate population from a sample and a parameter from that of a statistic. Population refers to the totality of observations under consideration, while a sample is just a subset of that population. In a research, the population is set by the researcher. If the researcher decides to uh, make population involving all people of the Philippines, then he can do that. The researcher is the one who sets the population. Or if the researcher wants his or her population to be a small group involving high school students from schools of La Trinidad, then that would be okay. Again, a sample is just a subset of the population. Usually, observing an entire population is either impossible or impractical. That is why a sample is selected. A good sample is, of course, one that is representative or reflective of the characteristics of the population. You cannot identify your population as the students from Cordillera Administrative Region and then when you sampled, you only selected three students. That is far from being reflective or representative of your population. A parameter is a value computed when 
you have your population. You are computing from your population. In a study, for example, you decided that you're going to consider all that you identified as your population that may be a group of people or plants or animals. You decided to involve all the values that you will be computing from the data gathered from a population is called a parameter. For example, you computed the mean from a data gathered from your population, that mean is called a parameter. More completely, we call it population mean. Or when you computed the total of a data gathered from a population, that total is a parameter that is more completely termed as population total. If you are computing from a sample, instead of a population, you are computing from a sample because you only have a sample, that mean or total or median or whatever you are computing, those values are considered statistic without S. I'm going to show you a statement or statements from that statement, we are going to identify the sample in the population. The first one, Benguet General Hospital randomly selects 100 clients within a month to answer a survey questionnaire asking the quality of services they received. These monthly surveys are then collated at the end of the year to evaluate their annual performance in general. What is the sample and what is the population? Our sample is actually given in the problem. Benguet General Hospital selects 100 clients in a month. But the evaluation is done annually. So what should be our sample? These are the 1,200 clients surveyed in one year. Why 1,200? That's because you have 12 months and for each month, they surveyed 100 people. How about the population? What is the population in this problem? The population is, of course, all the clients within that particular year the clients of the hospital in that year. In a study focused on the difficulties of parents assisting their kids during online classes in Cordillera Administrative Region, 15 elementary schools were randomly selected to participate in the study. In each school, 200 parents were surveyed. What is the sample? These are the parents surveyed and how many of them? Since it involves 15 elementary schools, that's 15 times 200 parents per school, that gives you 3,000 parents. In the population, involves all parents in car with a criteria that the parent has children doing online classes that they need to assist. Another one, 10,000 individuals who watch ABS-CBN News and all its shows and programs were selected and were asked if they agree on the decision that their franchise will not be renewed. In this particular scenario, what is a sample in the population? The sample are those people or individuals involved in the survey. So it was mentioned in the first sentence that there are 10,000 individuals. The population comprises the millions of individuals who watch ABS-CBN nationally. Let me cut the video here for the continuation of this presentation. I will see you in the next video.